What up fam? This is your boy Rebel Dan. Today I want to talk to you guys about why I quit making beats and start making electronics. Okay. I have a few points written down, so uh, I'm going to go through the list in a second. But first, I just want to, you know, tell you why I decided to record this video today. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine last night. He's a he's an artist also. And he was saying to me, uh, you've been making electronics. You need to put more videos out. And I was telling him, I just don't have the time. And he said, man, that's bull. <laughs> so I said, okay. And I decided to wake up this morning and recorded this video. And a lot of people, they've been asking, why? No beats from you. You haven't been making beats, you've been missing. What happened? So I want to talk about that today. And the reason why I quit making beats for now, it's because I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't good at it. I was okay, but I wasn't good at it. So that's one of the factors why I quit making beats and picked up electronics. And when it comes to electronics, I made my first speaker when I was about five years old because my mom, she's a school teacher and she used to have those white cartridge papers. And one day she took home a couple, the white ones, like the speaker in the background. And uh, I just take apart the speaker took out that little web thing, that spider, wrapped the the, induct, the the coil, which is, you know, I didn't even know that's an inductor at the time I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Inductance and, you know. And when, it, when I showed it to my mom, she was so surprised. She couldn't believe that the speaker actually played, you know? So I, had, I have a love for electronics since I was a kid. So doing electronics to me comes natural because I used to take apart the old TVs and the radios, you know, and my uncle, he used to play a sound system in Kingston. So he always take me with him. So I'm gonna discuss some of the points why I'm not making beats anymore. And I have some stuff written down. Tell you the truth, it's a waste of my time because normally it take me a couple minutes to make beats. But sometimes you have to listen if it's mixed properly, you know, if it's, you know, tracked out properly, all of that stuff. And that would be like maybe 30 minutes to, to an hour. And I wouldn't sell my beats. I would just, you know, give it to a friend. But they would take sometimes weeks, months. I've seen people take you know, six months to a year to finish a recording, which is ridiculous because they're doing construction on the building next door. And sometimes they put up a building in, in less than eight months and that's a $500 million project. And people start paying rent, which is probably at $20 million a year. And, and that project is a way big, it's such a huge project. It's a multi-million dollar project compared to a beat where you could just structure in five minutes and send it to an artist. You know what I mean? And when I look, when I look at the stats, you get paid zero point zero zero two fra fraction of a penny, not even a penny, a fraction of a penny. So Spotify pays you zero point zero zero two to zero point zero zero five fraction of a penny. So I look at it like, you know, on my Spotify channel, I have millions of views and I'm not getting a hundred dollars a month, you know? So, um, one day I was saying to my girlfriend, you know, you know, what do you think about my beats? So she was saying, it's okay. You know, they, they sounds okay and stuff, you know? And I was getting placement because, uh, I, um, I got a placement where at, at the billboard, I think we went number nine or number 10 for a couple of weeks on the chart. So I, I have a couple of achievements and I've worked with Grammy nominated artists, Grammy winners and stuff. So that's not a big deal, but I find making beats was just a total 
waste of time because if you should think about it uh i'm not on beat stars and doing all of the other stuff where you know you could get marketed like you know you know dj Penn, he talks a lot of stuff how much he could make from beats and stuff which i do believe him because i see his placement and i respect him and i always watch his channel so i have a, a lot of respect for dj Payne. so respect to dj Payne. but for me so one it was kind of a waste of time two the payout payout wasn't enough you know um it's pointless sitting around trying to get <laughs> 100 million streams or 10 million streams every other month or every other week and you have to put in a lot of marketing even if you're working with an artist or so the, you know i find it more profitable for me working with a record label or working with an a and um a and r um mental health i would sit here for hours just making beats banging on keyboards and i wouldn't take a walk i wouldn't go outside which was pointless you know, which was pointless. So one one day, I, my I went to the dentist and uh, um, he was telling me, "Oh man, you need to take a walk sometimes." You know, you know, not just be in the house. So uh, you know, I was saying, you know, for real. And um, my girlfriend, she used to say the same thing too. But you know, I, I was just there making beats. So, um, but after a while, it's just I was just inside, man detach not calling my family members or you know just detach and um i just started running breaking out and doing more stuff i mean now i slow down a little bit because i have so much stuff to do you know there's no excuse anyways um so it was taking a toll on me it was taking a fucking toll on me so that's why I, you know and and since i started taking a walk and I, I i felt better let me give you a funny story i was running and i saw travis scott um, um, and sunset, and I was like, "Yo, what's up, dude?" And he was like, "Yo, what's up, man?" He's cool, dude. He was just driving his uh, his um, his Bugatti. And one one evening, I was running, and I saw um, Coach K. <laughs> he was by the restaurant. He was just having food, and I was just I said, "Yo, what's up, Coach K?" And he just, you know, and. I've seen plenty more different, whether, you know, celebrities are, you know, different artists and so. So it's good to take a walk. Take If you don't run, take a walk. Grab an apple, go take a walk. It's good for your mental health. Um, So, okay, we already covered the spectrum why I'm not making beats no more because uh, let's recap. It's a waste of my time for right now because and the payout isn't enough and... Um, when it comes to collaboration, it's like you have to fight or you have to pay. I'm not paying a guy to collaborate with him. I mean, yes, you may have some plaques and, you know, but I, I don't think I should pay you, you know, two grand, three grand to collaborate with you. I don't think that's necessary. You know, if this is something where we want to um, uh, get bigger, you know, the, the record labels, they collaborate. They don't pay each other to collaborate. You know, Universal don't call one and say, yo, hey, or, you know you have to pay me. No, they negotiate, negotiate splits. So we're small people. We shouldn't be after, you know, um, those little fractions of, a, of pennies. Um, so why I started making electronics? I started making electronics, as I said in the beginning, I had always loved electronics. So that's one of the factors. And, um, a friend of mine, he said to me once, uh, you're very good at this. And I was just showing him um, one of my pedals, one of my first pedals. And he was like, man, you're good at this. You know, you should do it. And, and I thought about it for a second. And, you know, I said, you know what? That same evening, I went and made a beat. And I listened to the beat the next day. And that's, it, it sounds just ass. It just sounds shit. Tell you the truth. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start making electronics. And I just started making my synthesizers and just little stuff. And, you know, build on it. And I just loved it. You know what I mean? Even when stuff don't go as quiet in, you know, I would spend hours just working and stuff. Um, give me a second, guys. I'm making some tea. So I'll be right back.
apologies guys i was just making some tea so making electronics i love electronics man when you think about the music industry in a whole for for the year of 2022 the whole industry grossed 15.9 billion dollars in revenue compared to a company like Best Buy, you know, who had, you know, pro, you know, revenue of 43.8 billion. You know, so if you really think about the music industry and just think about Best Buy as a company, you know what I mean? And when I think about consumer electronics, uh, the market size, this is some old data, the market size in 2019 was $729.11 billion. And that's expected to grow from, you know, 20, 2022 anywhere to 2027 to 9.8937 billion. So if you really think about it, the music industry compared to the electronics industry, I mean, yes, they both intertwine. You have to listen music with your headphones. So instead of me making music, I could make headphones. I could make a speaker, as you see behind me. I could make a guitar. And if I make a guitar, it's going to be $1,000 because it's handmade. And if I make speakers, it's going to be over $1,000 because you have to use very good electronics. You know what I mean? Because this is studio monitors. You have to use class A amplifiers, class A, B, A, B amplifiers, class. You have to figure out which, uh, which is the best amplifier. So you have to be knowledgeable. Um, how do I know about this stuff? Uh, I had some knowledge prior and I just started buying books. I just started asking a lot of people questions and, you know, who, they would give me answers. I would pay people to, to, um, to just explain stuff to me when I didn't understand it. And I just reached a roadblock and I just started just buying books. So not to stray from the point, um, uh, the electronics market is, is super huge. And as I tell you, there will be days where I'm making, whether it's a fuzz pedal, you know, or I'm making a, a small amplifier like this guy, like this one right here. And I don't understand something. And I could hit up any older guy or any older female or any younger person who's doing electronics and get some answers or wherever I'm having roadblocks, they'll just help you. When it comes to making beats, you'll ask somebody, hey, can I get that drum kit? And they get possessive of a snare or a hi-hat. <laughs> this is really, <laughs> that's really frustrating. If you really think about it, back in the days, you'd be going to a show and you wouldn't have a drum set. You could just ask your neighbor, yo, can I borrow your drum set if you don't have a show? And he'd be like, of course. And probably when you come back, you even give him some money. And when 2023 and you ask somebody for a snare or a kick and they're going to tell you it's the secret sauce. Man, this is not KFC. This is just making music. It's something for a group of people to unite. So, um, yeah, that's one of the things that really annoyed me. So electronics, it's it's such a huge market. I um, and I have a love for it. Uh, that's why I started dab just dabbling um, in the electronic market. Like uh, I'm gonna show you an example of like. This circuit, this is a 6922 tube, tube amplifier circuit. You can see, yeah, tube amplifier circuit. I designed this circuit on a piece of paper. First inspiration came in my head. I designed it on a paper. I look for other people who have done other circuits previous because you're not going to invent nothing. You're just going to add on it. You know, and I realized that's where a lot of people mess up. They just want to say, oh, I invented this. You know, I, you know, I just want to add. So I, I look for other circuits, find other circuits, and um, I make modifications. So if I don't like the input or the output or, you know, how uh, the filaments or the, the power supply to the filament uh, is distributed, I redesigned it. Um, so... After I designed this circuit, I have 
two people working for me who design like my CAD and my BOOM and all of my 3D files and stuff because I don't have no time for that. I want to have time to just do something else. So they do all of that heavy lifting for me. Um, send it out to get printed PCB board. It comes back. After it's populated, it looks like this. And then you have tubes. You're going to put a socket right here. And you have tubes that go. So, yeah, it's a tube amplifier. A little circuit like this right now. The circuit as is, I could charge anywhere from $65 to $150. And that's just one circuit. And I sell plenty of those just for the day. So instead of me sitting around making beats for an hour, a day, for seven days, I could just sell a circuit. You know, this is a this is a, a diode bridge compressor. These go a circuit like this goes when it's pop populated and it's in the whole enclosure. A circuit like this goes for a three thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars. For example, you could go look for the Neve diode bridge compressor, Mr. Rupert Neve. He's one of my he's my mentor. Um, they sell for thousands of dollars. So if you know how to make use your brain to make electronics, like a small guitar pedal, this one, these go for a hundred to two hundred to three hundred dollars. You know, and my stuff is handmade, I, I, high quality stuff. I don't do no stupid stuff because I don't want nobody to sell me no stuff which is low quality. I wouldn't want to mess with that. So that's why that's one of the things that really drawn me to electronics. Um, I love it. And there's a lot of money in it. Don't let nobody tell you you shouldn't work for money or, you know, whatever. As long as you're pas passionate about what you do, collect your money. Yeah. So, as you can see, the electronics, and I'm not really comparing because it's not like I totally quit making beats. You know, I'm going to go back when I have some time. But for now, I... I just take a break and um, just decided to just do something different. Um, so that's why I quit making beats and start making electronics. Um, before I go, I want to show you something else that I'm working on. So that's the new speaker design that I'm working on. And those are called open baffle. It doesn't need a cabinet like the one you see behind. Uh, you just need a dual centric speaker, which has a tweeter and a subwoofer inside. But I kind of go the different road because as I tell you, I like to try different stuff. So I have a subwoofer and I have a tweeter. And it's all about placement when it comes to uh, um, baffle, th those baffle speaker, op open baffle speakers. It's all about placement. So this is one of the new projects that I'm working on. And I have a prototype and indiegogo so i'd love for you guys to go to indiegogo and look for da4231 plus those are my new speakers that i'm working on and support the campaign because if we raise enough funds we could make those monitors more affordable for uh, uh bedroom producers because we more we're mostly targeting bedroom producers because um a lot of makers are not passionate when it comes to bedroom producers making equipment for bedroom producers so um go to indiegogo check out my campaign thanks for watching the video much love much blessing do what you do support yourself follow your dreams follow your hearts much love much love I'm making hard mistakes towards it. <laughs> much love, much blessings, respect.